Hi, I'm Captain Taylor Bai, and I'm honored to introduce our next guest for the Moody Women in Aviation Week, Colonel Kim Casey Campbell. Colonel Campbell is currently the director of the Center for Character and Leadership Development at her alma mater, the United States Air Force Academy, Colorado Springs, Colorado, where she commissioned as a distinguished graduate in 1997. In addition to being a Marshall Scholar with two master's degrees, she is a command pilot with over 1,700 hours in the A-10, including 375 combat hours. In her flying career, she has been awarded with many prestigious decorations to include the Distinguished Flying Cross of Valor for her bravery and impeccable airmanship during her combat experience in Operation Iraqi Freedom. Casey has used her experiences throughout her career to make a difference in the lives of many by, by sharing her Air Force journey through multiple platforms, such as the National Character and Leadership Symposium at the Academy, as well as through Athena's Voice, the Wisdom of Women Warriors. We are so glad to have you here today, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, let's kick this off. So you've had um, quite a long time in the Air Force as an experienced pilot. When did you know that you wanted to fly? So I'm uh, approaching 24 years of service in the Air Force. And I will tell you, I decided at a pretty young age that I was gonna go to the Air Force Academy and become a fighter pilot. Uh, when I was in fifth grade, um, I had watched the Challenger accident. Um, and I know that may seem a bit ironic, but I watched um, as the Challenger exploded on the TV and kind of went through the turmoil of that and realized that the astronauts died doing something that they believed in and something that was bigger than the, just themselves. And it really connected with me. And even at the age of it, it, in being in fifth grade, I decided that was something I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to fly. And I actually started out my, um, my dreams as wanting to be an astronaut. And the more I talked to my parents, um, trying to figure out how to get to that point um, to, for somebody that had never flown um, in anything. And um, they really talked to me about the Air Force Academy as an opportunity and flying as um, a pilot in the Air Force was kind of the, the path the best path at that point to take to get to the astronaut program. So I decided in fifth grade that this is what I wanted to do. Wow. So you are very passionate and motivated from such a young age. That's incredible. Did you have any um, previous military in your family that kind of led you to the Air Force versus another branch? Well, my dad had been in the Air Force um, for only five years, but he graduated from the Air Force Academy. And so he, you know, he at least knew something about it. But I think for a father, for any parent, this idea that your, you know, um, your daughter, your child wants to go off and do something hard and challenging. Um, I think he had some reservations initially, and I don't think he actually thought that I, it was something that I would stick with, mm -hmm. that maybe it was just a night, a fleeting idea. And um, I just proved him wrong that it was something <laughs> that I really wanted to go do. And once he figured that out, once he was like, oh, she's serious, um, he really worked with me and helped me to, to get me to the point where I could be accepted into the academy. Um, but it was, um, it, you know, it wasn't necessarily an easy path. Um, and I was thankful for their support. But it was, um, it was one of those things I decided early on. And I was just, this is what I was committed to doing. And nobody was going to stop me. That is amazing. I bet he is so proud of you now to see where, how far you've come. He is. You know, we've had a lot of similar experiences, especially at our time at the Academy. And um, I know my parents are both really proud and, um, you know, I'm, they helped me get where I am today. I mean, I couldn't have done everything that I've done in my career without them from getting into the Academy for being prepared and ready to go into the Academy um, to just my career in the Air Force with having a family and, and you know, being married with kids and, and deploying and all of those things I could not have done without my parents. That is so great. They really do have such a huge, I know for me, that's a support system as well. And um, especially being away from them when you first take that step to go be away, it's, um, it's a huge challenge on both sides, I would imagine, but that's wonderful that you had their support throughout your whole time. Yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't have done it without them. That's great. Throughout your career, who's inspired you the most? Um, um, definitely my parents. <laughs> I, you know, it's, um, I got to the academy and, and got into the flying um, at a time when there weren't many women. And so there weren't a lot of people that looked like me um, in the Air Force that wanted to do the same things. And there were women that had come before me, but they weren't, I wasn't connected with them in any way. And so um, as I started my path at the Air Force Academy and then um, pilot training and then getting into the A-10, um, I, 
I really turned to my parents a lot. My dad was, as I mentioned, academy grad. Um, he wasn't a pilot, but he had a very successful career in law and then in politics. And so we talked about struggles and getting through things and how you do that. Uh, and my mom was an oncology nurse and she, um, she really shared with me about the passion to go after something. And, and I faced setbacks along the way and she was always there. They both were there by my side. And so I think more than anybody, my parents have really inspired me and encouraged me and got me through the rough times and were by my side during the good times as well. Uh, if you could go back and change, oh, sorry. I skipped over some. Um, what advice would you give someone who wants to do what it is you're doing right now? I think the biggest thing is if you have a goal, just go after it and know that it's not gonna be a perfect ride you're going to make mistakes. There are going to be setbacks. Um, you're going to fail. I mean, that, and that's hard um, to acknowledge and accept, but there are going to be those rough moments. And I think the important thing is you kind of, you know, dust yourself off and, you know, you're going to get knocked down and you just get back up and go after it. Um, you can't do this because somebody else wants you to do it. It has to be fully something that you want to do because it's not easy. None of it has been easy. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, but it, it hasn't always been easy. I think, you know, the important thing for me was at a young age, this is what I decided I wanted to do. So doing well in school, participating in sports, kind of trying to get that all around environment of volunteering. And I joined Civil Air Patrol at a very young age and got to fly for the first time um, in a Cessna, a helicopter. I learned how to march and wear the uniform. And so when I got to the Air Force Academy, it wasn't such a unique experience for me, but all of those things help prepare me to get where I am. Uh, and so I think a lot of it is just setting a goal and then working really hard, um, knowing that it's not always gonna go well and having a good attitude as well, um, in, especially in those tough moments, um, knowing that, yep, you might've got knocked down on this one, but you get back up, you work hard, you spend time studying and, and working to be credible in what you do. Um, I think that's really the, the, you know, if I were to sum it up, I would say work hard and have a good attitude. That's great. I'm sure that that positive attitude that you're displaying right now and that you've kept throughout your career, I'm sure that that was monumental when you did have those uh, challenges and hardships. And I really appreciate your realistic um, point of view of knowing that you are going to fail sometimes, but the biggest thing I know is just to get back out there and tell yourself you're gonna do better next time. And um, that's really great to hear that that has been, has helped you in your career so far. Yeah, I, mean, I set this goal for myself of going to the Air Force Academy and it was the only thing I wanted to do. I mean, I, I didn't even want to apply to other schools and yet my parents were very smart and said that you probably should apply for a few backup schools as well. Um, and I actually got a rejection letter from the Academy in April of my senior year. And um, it essentially said, you know, thanks for applying. It's very competitive, try again next year. And I, I mean, I was devastated. This is, I had set my entire path on going to the Air Force Academy. And, and there are other ways to join the Air Force, but for me, that was what I wanted to do. And when I saw that letter, it was just, it was crushing. I mean, I, it was kind of like, I was at a low of where do I go from here? Thankfully, my parents, and I also had a very good liaison officer who um, kind of said, hey, if, if this is what you want, then don't, you know, don't take no for an answer. And I wrote the Academy every week, uh, a letter to let them know that I was still interested. And if somebody decided to decline their appointment to the Air Force Academy, that I, I was ready, that I, I would still be willing to go to the Air Force Academy. And I finally got my appointment letter in June, early June. Um, and I was, I had to report three weeks later. So I had very little time Thankfully, during all that time, I was still doing all the things that I needed to to physically prepare myself. Um, but I, I think about like, what if I had quit? What if I had just decided, oh, it's too hard? Or if I had just quit on my goals, I just wonder where I would be. And what if I, you know, if I had quit, maybe I wouldn't have had all the, the experiences that I've had. So like I said, it isn't easy and there will be setbacks. It's just sticking to what's important to you. Wow, that is the definition of perseverance. And that is amazing that you pushed so hard and 
it turned out to be uh, <laughs> the right choice, the right experience for yeah, you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. In hindsight, it's all worked out. In, the, in, mm -hmm. the, in that moment, I was totally crushed and devastated, <laughs> but you know, here I am now. So it's all, it's all worked out. That's so great. If you could go back and change anything in your career, what would it be, if anything? You know, I don't think there is anything that I would actually change. I think there are things I don't want to do again, uh, ever. I, I would prefer not to go through the Air Force Academy again because it was tough and challenging. Um, but I wouldn't change that experience for the world. I mean, I met some of the greatest people and had some of the best experiences. And those challenges made me who I am today. I mean, those challenges... Um, really helped me get through even more challenges throughout my career. And so I think there's nothing I would change. I think there are things that once is enough, going to the academy is enough, uh, going through survival school once is enough. Uh, you know, you kind of have those moments, you're thankful you've had them, but I, I don't think I would change anything. That's awesome. That's really good to know that you've just enjoyed it, the time and enjoyed the journey each step of the way. It's easier now at 24 years looking back. I mean, in the moment, don't get me wrong. Some of those, some of those moments were difficult and they were hard and they were challenging. But I think looking back, you know, you just realize that every failure, every difficult situation um, leads you to being more prepared when you face those challenges again. And so, um, you know, when I face challenges flying the A-10 or flying in combat and having those experiences, I think every every little thing that has happened really prepared me for those moments. That's wonderful. What is your favorite story or flight that stand out, stands out the most in your career? Speaking of leading up to those difficult moments, <laughs> um, I, by far for me, a, a mission that I flew in Iraq in 2003 is most memorable, most influential, most impactful. Um, and it, you know, it was a significant challenge in my, and really a turning point for me in my life and my career in the Air Force, because it was such a difficult moment, but it's really impacted and set the stage, if you will, for the rest of my career. Um, it taught me a lot about myself and how I could perform in difficult situations. It also taught me a lot about leadership and how to lead people through difficult situations. Um, but this was back in April of 2003, and Operation Iraqi Freedom had been underway for about three weeks. And as an A-10 pilot, we were assigned to fly um, from our base in Kuwait all the way up to Baghdad. Um, our Army and Marine brothers had pushed all the way to Baghdad and this was kind of the final moment of a really difficult fight. And so they would fly airplanes up to Baghdad, we would air refuel, and then we would just wait in these stacks. They had stacks of airplanes set up around Baghdad so that we could get in really as as quickly as possible. And on April 7th, 2003, this was exactly the mission we were going to do. Um, but unfortunately, the weather was terrible. I mean, we, we refueled and then we couldn't see the ground below. Uh, Baghdad was just covered in clouds. We didn't really think we were going to be able to make much of a difference um, because we just weren't, we couldn't see the ground. Um, we didn't think we were going to be able to get out of the weather. And then we got a call from a um, ground controller who um, said that his team was taking fire and they requested immediate assistance. And so we did everything in our power to get there as quickly as we could. And my flight lead decided we were just going to hang out over the weather, look for a hole in the clouds, and then just dive down through. And so he found a hole, he went down first, uh, and then he said, Casey, it's your turn. Um, and so I just kind of looked down, found a hole. I kind of see Baghdad below, found that hole in the clouds, and just kind of just put my nose down right through. And I remember as I was going through the clouds, I was starting to see Baghdad get bigger below me. And he said, hey, make sure you keep your jet moving, which we try to do, to, especially in a combat environment, um, to just be unpredictable. And I got down below the weather and immediately the Tigris River came into view, kind of green, blue water. And luckily, very identifiable feature. We had the friendlies on one side, the enemy on the other. Um, but I also could see this firefight happening. I mean, I just could see tracers and smoke and it was, it was really surreal for, I don't know, probably a half of a second, but it's in that moment you're, you realize that this is the situation that you train for. I mean, this is everything that you practice to go do. And um, I, we were really focused on 
getting in there as quickly as we could. The enemy was hiding under a bridge. And so we knew that we had to kind of get right underneath that bridge to take the enemy out. My flight lead was already set up, getting set up for his first pass. And about this time, as I'm following a trail on him, I start to see just puffs of first gray and then white and then flashes. And these aren't on the ground anymore. These are right next to my cockpit. And it's, it's at this moment we realize that not only is there's the massive firefight going on across the river, that they're also shooting at us too. And so we decided that we were just gonna do a couple passes each, two passes each, get in there, uh, shoot our gun and rockets on the enemy location. And then we would climb back up and reassess um, just because of the, the threat at the, at the time. And uh, we did gun and then rocket. And as I was setting up for my last rocket pass, checking to make sure everything, you know, my switches are set correctly, my distance from the target, my altitude, just making sure everything was ready. Rolled in, um, put rockets down on the enemy location and then immediately pulled uh, to get away from the ground, away from the threat. And trying to climb uh, to get my energy back when I just felt and heard this large explosion at the back of the airplane. And I knew immediately I was hit. I mean, there was no doubt in my mind. It was loud. I remember just almost like a fireball uh, kind of engulfing the airplane and, um, and then nothing. I mean, my jet just nosed over. I remember looking down at Baghdad below and it just was getting closer and I instinctively, instinctively pulled back on the stick so that I could try to climb. And it was, it was just like nothing. I mean, nothing at all. The airplane wasn't responding. Uh, I, at this point, I, I really only had a few options. Um, time really slowed down uh, for me in that moment because it was trying to control the airplane was my first priority, which I could not do. Um, and then trying to figure out what happened. And I remember master caution lights flashing in my face. I looked down at my caution panel over on the side and um, it was, there were a lot of lights on. But I remember looking at the top of the panel and I had uh, four hydraulic lights on for the reservoir and pressure and then looking up at the gauges and realizing that the, the hydraulics were at zero. I mean, it was just instantly depleted. Um, and so I looked down at my ejection handles uh, and thought, not yet. <laughs> uh, the last thing I wanted to do was eject in that moment over Baghdad. And so thankfully in the A-10, we have a backup system called manual reversion. And it's just a little switch, um, but that switch allowed me to fly the aircraft under uh, what I would say is mechanical or manual mode, um, which, as you know, is um, it's not something that we practice very often. It's kind of like old school flying and like cranks and cables. The airplane doesn't fly as well, but I did not care because the airplane actually started flying. Um, and so I was able to kind of pull out and away from Baghdad at that moment. Um, but I, there was a, you know, that in that moment, I wasn't sure if I was going to survive and it was, um, it happened very fast, but thankfully all of the training that I had ensured that in that moment where I didn't have time to ask for help, I didn't have time to open a checklist that I could react. Um, and I was able to take action because of all of that training and support that I had had everything leading up to that moment. Um, at some point in here, I told my flight lead that I had been hit. And this is to me where I learned the most about leadership and he was my flight lead. But in that moment of feeling just overwhelmed with so much going on and I really was just focusing on flying, he was there to remind me of all of those other things of trying to get my airplane over to the west side of the river so that if I had to eject that, I would at least eject over to the friendly location. Um, he reminded me to put out more chaff and flares to, so if they shot at me again, ideally it would track on the chaff or flares. And then uh, he also um, told me to emergency jettison at all of my ordnance on the airplane so that I could start to climb and climb better. Um, and immediately when I did those things, the airplane become, became much easier to control. And so that was a lesson for me in terms of being that mutual support, um, being that wingman or flight lead in this case, who was going to be there for me and support me. You know, I wasn't alone. I, yes, in that moment, I had to make some very quick decisions on my own, but it was so reassuring to know that I had somebody there who was highly experienced, who was really going to help me um, through that difficult moment. So 
there were so many lessons from that mission. I mean, I could, I could talk about all the things that I learned, but I think, you know, the things that stand out to me are being prepared so that when that moment, when that difficult moment comes, whether it's, you know, in, you know, a life situation or for me flying in combat that you're prepared, um, but also the teamwork that it takes to get through those difficult situations. Um, and so I think for me, when I say it was influential, it was impactful. Um, it really made me prioritize things in life and, and really look at what was important um, and focusing on the lessons that I learned from that mission. Um, I'm, I'm actually thankful that it happened so early in my career because for me, I just learned so much from it. I don't ever want to go through it again. Well, just to put that out there, uh, it was one of those challenges, but I, I wouldn't change it. I, it's, it made me who I am today. Um, and it's given me opportunities in many ways to share my lessons with others and change the way we do some things in flying the A-10. Um, but uh, yeah, by far the most Im influential, impactful, significant moment of my career came in 2003. And it has just, it's changed the way I've operated as an A-10 pilot, you know, leading a two ship or a four ship or being a squadron commander or a group commander. Um, it has just impacted me in that way. Wow. I have goosebumps. I'm sure everyone else listening is just jaw dropped in awe. That story is absolutely incredible. And it sounded like at that gut check moment, you found all that was within you to persevere. And it sounded like that probably happened in a matter of seconds that you had to make these life altering decisions. Yeah, it really did. I mean, it was a matter of seconds, but you know, we, we train for those moments. We, we brief to those moments. We chair fly for those moments. And so I really, despite being quite honestly terrified, um, which I didn't admit at the time, but I could go back and listen to the video and know that I was terrified. I mean, I was, I was prepared. I was prepared to face that difficult moment. Um, you know, and now looking back, it seems like so long ago, but when I tell it, I really can visualize being right back in the moment. Um, and I think you can see over my shoulder here with the FT, I think I'll move my camera just a little bit. Uh, the FT-987 is a, a piece of the tail from that airplane. Um, they tried to fix the airplane and uh, there were just, there was not enough time and too many holes uh, in the airplane from all the shrapnel damage. And so um, they were nice enough to give me a little piece of it uh, to keep with me. And I know there's a piece uh, behind you as well that's yeah. over the door there. So that is where the missile impacted the airplane and then sent shrapnel through the rest of the airplane, but pretty cool to have those memories. You know, they're, um, I look at them now as they're positive memories. They're, you know, it's um, taught me a lot about who I am and, um, and the importance of what we do. Um, and for me, my, my why, my reason for doing this is because I absolutely love supporting our troops on the ground. And I think any A-10 pilot will tell you that's why we do what we do, because uh, if we can do something to make a difference to help those guys get home safely, then that's what matters. That's truly amazing. As um, especially a woman, but as an A-10 pilot following in your footsteps, knowing that you have, that we have this piece of Air Force history and a piece of your personal story in our heritage room. Anytime somebody walks in and they see that, especially someone who is not as familiar with the A-10 aircraft and how sturdy and uh, um, uh, reliable it is, and they see that, they say, oh my goodness, what happened? That plane surely would have crashed. And I say, no, that pilot is continuing to lead the Air Force and your story lives through the heritage that you have brought to us. So obviously I'm not glad that it happened to you, but I'm thankful for the lessons that you have taught us. Um, Cause I know that all of the pilots here at the 75th Flying Squadron here at Moody, we know your story, we talk about it. It has sparked so many conversations and those conversations and hearing those experiences are what gives us the courage and the um, the strength really to get through those missions, whether we're deployed or whether we're in training, because we come back to the, you know, to the room, we have our drinks, we have our debrief, we're looking at this piece of heritage and we say, Casey's inspired me today. And we look around the room and we see all the other pieces of heritage and we're just so thankful. And um, it really is just inspiring to have a piece of your story here. Uh, I know yeah. it's, it's definitely uh, struck a chord with my family. Uh, they actually knew about your story before I ever wanted to become an A-10 pilot. And um, my dad is probably your biggest fan. I mean, your dad probably <laughs> is, but even just this morning as I was preparing for the interview, um, he and I were talking and he has on the War and History channel, he has the interview with you saved. He's like, do you want to watch it? I'm like, dad, I have it memorized, <laughs> you know, just because it's 
it really has made a difference. And I know that that has been a defining point in your career, but it sounds like your career has been so vast. And even though that was such a big part, you are just such a, uh, it's your, your influence has been even bigger than just that moment. Um, but I'm thankful that you've been willing to share that experience with us um, in the community and just in the Air Force in general. I think there's an important piece about sharing stories. I look back to that moment over Baghdad and I think the reason that I was successful um, was one because of the mutual support that I had from my team, but I also remembered stories from pilots, A-10 pilots who had flown in Desert Storm and they had come to either the 75th Fighter Squadron to, to share those stories or prior to that in pilot training. And I remember those stories, you know, I remembered how difficult they said it was to fly in manual reversion. Um, there's books about pilots who have done, you know, that tried um, to do the same thing before me. And so I remember those stories. I remember those moments. I remember the lessons that they had. And I really think that's what helped me in that moment to be successful was because I knew that I had this hour long flight home from Baghdad or uh, to get back to Kuwait flying in manual reversion. And um, it was tough, it was really hard, but I remember the stories of the people that came before me and that helped me prepare, that helped me prepare to land, that helped me fly. Uh, and so that's why I think sharing those stories are so important. It's really, it's not about you, it's about the people that are around you and trying to make them better um, is I, what I think it comes down to. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. We'll close with um, one last story or one last um, question. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the um, young men and women who are watching um, you here today? Any other words of advice that you would give them just to encourage them to pursue um, their desires as, just as you did? I think, you know, the important thing is, um, you know, there's all these things that we want to do in our life and goals and objectives and priorities that we have. Um, and sometimes when you go after them, I think it can feel uh, a little bit scary that you might fail. I think there are times where you're nervous or anxious about doing something for the first time. I will tell you walking into the 75th fighter squadron on day one, I was incredibly nervous. I was, you know, I wanted to prove myself as a pilot. Um, I really didn't think about the fact that I was the only female in the squadron. That wasn't important to me. What was important to me was to be good as an A-10 pilot, to be credible. Um, and respected for my, um, the, the job of being a pilot. Um, but I, I, I had moments of fear. I had moments of um, being nervous about what I was about to do. I mean, before every mission, you're a little nervous because you want to do well, you want to perform well. Um, and so what I would just say is not, it's not that fear that matters, right? We've all been there. It's what you do in those moments. So, you know, it's, it's walking into the squadron and being confident because you've studied and you've worked hard um, and I think that's really what it comes down to is just credibility and, and working hard, having that good attitude so that in those moments of fear, nervousness that you can, you can perform um, because being credible um, in the airplane goes a long way. Um, and um, I think that is really what matters the most is, is what you do in those moments where you might be nervous or scared or afraid um, because when we're doing something new, when we're trying something new, where we're really putting ourselves out there um, yeah, it, it's about what you do in those moments and how you perform. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all of your experiences with us today. Um, I know I am inspired and I'm sure that um, all of the other uh, members out there watching virtually today, and thank you all for joining us as well. Um, your history and your heritage will continue to live on at 75th here at Moody. And again, thank you so much for your time today. Awesome. Thanks for having me.